All right, this podcast is going to go over some more access control list related information that can make your life a little bit easier. Uh, one of those things is going to go over is editing access control list using sequence numbers. I had uh, said in a, a previous podcast, you may or may not have watched that if you do, if you have a standard access control list, such as we do, not a standard, an extended access control list, numbered list, I'd say that if you, if you want to try to get rid of one line uh, and you do no access list 101, blah, 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 it gets rid of it. Uh, it gets rid of the entire list, and that's true. Uh, but I didn't uh, realize that this version of the code we have can actually let you edit uh, these access control lists by sequence number. Um, the thing about access control lists, uh, Cisco has made several changes throughout history, and some features don't work in older versions of the code, and some features work in newer versions of the code. So sometimes it's, it's hard to keep track of all that stuff, depending on which version you have. Uh, I thought, uh, mistakenly, in this case, that the version I was using would not let me edit this uh, access list I created this way with sequence numbers, but I was wrong. So if you want to see the sequence numbers of your access list, you can do show access lists, and it shows you the sequence numbers. So by default, when the list was created, they were put with these sequence numbers 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60, right? So uh, you can edit your access list using those sequence numbers. So the way you do that, you go into config mode and then you go into the edit mode like this and this puts you in this context where you can edit the access list so say for example I want to I want to move uh, one of these lines around I can do no 40 to delete line 40 right and then if I want to put that line back in between number 50 and 60 I can put 55 and then I can put the line back in like this, this is not an example that makes a lot of sense because it doesn't really change anything. Right, so now if I do show access lists, we can see that my 40 line is gone and I have a new 55 line. So if you were accidentally, you know, put in a line you don't want, that's a way you can get rid of it. So that's editing access control list with sequence numbers. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is uh, using named access control lists. So uh, previously we did not control traffic going outbound from our user land. So we'll go ahead and implement that now using a named access control list. Access control, named access control lists work uh, in a very similar way, except instead of having a number, they have a name. And you have to create them in this, this kind of interactive format. If you do access list itself, it wants a number, but if you put IP access list extended, you can give it a name. And we're going to give it a name. You want to give it a meaning name. So we're going to, meaningful name. So we're going to call it outbound from LAN. Uh, a good practice is to limit the traffic allowed out of your network so that your users can only go to sites and protocols that you want them to. Uh, and the reason for that is so that it makes them harder to steal your data. Um, you know, you don't want people FTPing out to some some site and stealing your, your customer data. So you probably only only want to allow, you know, web traffic and, and DNS traffic. And I hear you, you know, oh hey, I, I can FTP, I can upload files over HTTP. Yeah, you're right. But your goal is to make it as hard as possible for people to steal your data. So yeah. So in this case, we're gonna do the same thing we were doing. We're gonna permit some traffic. We're gonna permit TCP since we we're talking about our LAN. We're going to go ahead and specify our LAN subnet, uh, and then we're going to do this little magical thing, which this is a, called a wildcard mask, and it's the opposite of the net mask. So for this LAN here, we have a subnet mask of 255.255.255.128. Um, so the wildcard mask to match that would be 0.0.0.127. I'm not going over the wildcard mask in this podcast, so if you want to learn more about that, uh, look somewhere else or talk to me. And we can work on uh, figuring that out. And then we're going to let it go out to any uh, destination IP address over port 80, EQ80. We're going to do the same thing for 443. And then we're going to allow DNS traffic out. Oh, man, I messed up. That's supposed to be UDP. So I'll fix that. And now I will... Not IP... And then I'll get rid of 30, because 30 was wrong, right? So I'll do no 30. 
So now I have uh, allowed the, the outbound traffic, I want to allow out. Uh, so now I need to apply it to an interface in a direction. In this case, I'm going to apply it to my FA0 slash 1.2 sub interface. And I'm going to apply it, you apply it the same way, IP access group. And then you put the name or the number. Our name is outbound from LAN. Right, because that's what it's filtering, and I spelled outbound wrong. And then we want to put the direction. And clearly we're going to put out, right, because this is going out of our network. That is not right. That is wrong. It may be going out of our network, and we may have called it outbound, but it's coming into this interface. The traffic leaves from this PC, goes in the sub-interface. So the filtering direction we want to filter on is in, because it's coming in the interface. Outbound, in this case, if we wanted to filter outbound, it would be filtering traffic coming back through the, the network. It would be going out of the interface. It would be coming from through the router and then going out of the interface. So we're going to filter in. And that's going to, uh, I'm going to take that off. We didn't test some things first to make sure it's going to work properly. So let's go back and test some things. So we're going to make sure we can get to my web server. That worked. And then for fun, we're going to try FTP because that's a good protocol for stealing data. So we're going to FTP... Uh, uh, FTP uh, www.cnt.lab and it didn't work Oh, and I know why it didn't work. It didn't work because uh, our other access control list, this list up here is blocking the FTP traffic. So that that's problematic. So yeah, so we have two layers of defense. So I'm not going to edit this other list, right, our 101 list. I'm not going to edit this list. That's a problem. This this list is not letting FTP back in. Uh, so I'm not going to edit that list just to, to make this work. Uh, but then it kind of defeats the purpose of my demonstration. So yeah, let me go ahead and edit that list. So I'm going to go ahead and edit that list. Fun times. This is what it's like to work in security. You, you make a, a little change and then uh, you make a little change and then it messes everything up. So that's why you don't make changes during the day. So now I'm going to add, uh, I'm just going to I'll add a rule to let everything back in for now. Because that's a horrible security idea. Permit IP, no, I won't let everything in. Permit TCP, um, host 100.100.100.2, um, any, and then we're going to put uh, greater than that. We'll just do that. So this should let the return traffic back in for now. Any traffic from my server out here should now be allowed in. Not, not the best rule, but better than any, any rule. So there, now my uh, TFTP worked. So in theory, I could connect to the TFTP server and uh, upload all my customer data and steal it all. So now once we put the uh, access control list on the interface, all right, put that back on. Now, now we try to FTP. Hey, look at that. It's not working. Eventually it'll time out, hopefully. Hey, look, it didn't work. Awesome, we're now secure, but I can still get out to my web server, which is supposed to work. All right, so uh, that went over how to edit access control list using sequence numbers, how to use uh, named ACLs, uh, and how to, is that all it did? Yeah, all right, good. Good stuff.